seat of our pants. Holy seat of our pants. We're eight minutes late. Dang it. What a junk show we're running here. We had some buttons that were pushed inadvertently. That were extra kicky. We need to move our preamp next time. Anyway, that's our excuse. What episode is this? 18? 18. <laughs> we're almost halfway there to, to the point where we need to... Not going to have any more excuses. Yeah. I think we need to turn Lance up a little bit first. Okay, so okay. Mute. Oh, there's your computer. Okay, Lance's audio's Lance up. Lance is up. Up. Okay, everybody, tell us how our audio levels are so we can adjust these off. This whole COVID thing has screwed us up, and Lance is sitting closer than six feet away from me. Yes, which is a real problem. Yeah. I think I need, I feel like I need to get turned up a little bit. I'm always okay. needing to get turned up. Softball. What? what? Yeah, that okay. that feels like I'm not having to good. adjust more. That's okay. Better. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to. Is episode this my computer? That's up. Sorry. Eighteen. Um. It's one of us, huh? <laughs> I'm gonna put my money on Lance. <laughs> yeah. How's there that? we go. There it was go. Lance. <laughs> It's, oh geez, it's all rookie good. mistake. Uh, it's all man. Good. We have lots of comments though already. So here we are, podcast number eighteen. And we do apologize in advance our absence from the podcast room here. We had to clean it up. It'd been a while since we'd been here. It was yeah. So it was a bit of a task, but yeah, we uh, we got sidetracked with trying to keep a fly shop running. Yeah, and what a bunch of craziness. But here we are, alive and well, right? Yes, we are. The summer was, uh, so since you last left us, when was that, April? Squat, remember Squatch was on the table. She was like a seven pound puppy. She's huge. She's like 150 pounds now. Yep, she's 150, (laughs) maybe a a 200 pound puppy. She's on a keto diet diet over there. (laughs) She's on an Akita diet. Akita. Oh, goodness. Yeah, we, uh, we got real busy, real busy, the... Summer was nuts. Um, I think April was the pinnacle of the craziness online. Then uh, the shop was really busy. So thank you for that, everybody. And we're back to uh, disciplined scheduling of our podcast. We're going to try for every two weeks <laughs> for now. <laughs> no, we, we have to do it. There, we we get it. We, we see all your comments. We appreciate it. And... Uh, even though it's just us three, I guess we have a lot of lot to talk about, right? I guess so. A lot of opinions. Um, so, what? How are we going to jump into this? So we had a <laughs> I th- one of the l- f- last few times we had some questions on, uh, or we talked about different topics, and this one's been in the hopper for a little bit. Uh, stream or ritter- river etiquette, and. Um, Another one that's kind of an interesting one that I'm sure will raise some hackles. <laughs> uh, hot spotting. Dad joke. <laughs> Give that one about a four out of ten. <laughs> the delivery was terrible. Oh. But yeah, hot spotting and uh, river and just fishing etiquette. I I should say, you know. Yeah. And just to be perfectly clear here, nobody's perfect. Everybody's done this once or twice everybody runs into some of these issues but i think there are some definite things that need to be talked about and in the comments what we're the comments that we're following are the comments on facebook i mean not facebook (laughs) on on youtube YouTube. YouTube. so if you want to add to this or if you have questions and and they're the relevant to this discussion and you're watching live and you're watching live and it's not about Euronymph leaders. <laughs> we, we'll try to field some questions as best possible. Um, but first things first, what are we going to cover? River etiquette. Yeah, let's talk about that first. So I'm pulling up to the stream in my uh, Subaru Brat. Is that like the car truck That's a thing? Classic. <laughs> yeah, that was the old El Camino looking Subaru. And I've got great looking hair as I do. You know, know I've that. got a. Somebody says you need to catch a 19 incher again. 
<laughs> yeah, that'll only get me to trim about an inch off. Now though. they're making but, a stab at your last 22 inches. I know. Not really <laughs> oh, 22. yeah. That's yeah. a good joke. We I like see that you, one. rosy cotton. Nice one. Solid work. But anyway, anyway, so I'm I'm about ready to go fish a, a body of water. Let's say a, a populated body of water, such as our lower Provo River, mm-hmm. which runs right along the, the highway in Provo Canyon. If you've never been there, it's a very populated river. Um, however, there are lots of fish per mile. So if I were to go and fish that river, what's the appropriate amount of distance between me and another angler? Real questions. <laughs> Real questions? <laughs> Who knows, right? How busy is the river? I think it changes each day. I think uh, on a really busy river like that, I think it has a different slightly different etiquette than on a place that's you know if you've hiked into the backcountry somewhere i would expect people to act differently in the backcountry that i would than i mm-hmm. would on the lower provo so to me when i'm on the provo river i like to say uh you, you certainly shouldn't be in the same hole as somebody else the same run the same section um uh, ding so, ding correct yeah even if that's on the opposite side of the river the provo is not a big river right it's it's a it, by most river standards it's a small river yeah it's barely floatable there are a couple people that put drift boats on it but hardly anybody we floated in fly crafts and small rafts like that quite frequently but it's really only <clears throat> floatable in its summertime flow so it's not a big river if you've not been there for our local anglers they'll be very familiar with it and it's it's a place that, uh, because it does get a lot of traffic, you have to kind of expect there are going to be other anglers around. If you're w- way away from other people, that's ideal. To me, I'd, my ideal day on the river is to not see anybody, right? That's not realistic a lot of days. So you have to uh, play it by ear. And, and uh, I would I would say, you know, the old golden rule, do unto others as they, you would have them do unto you, right? If, if you would... If you wouldn't mind somebody else jumping right in front of you, well, you're probably you have a problem, I guess. <laughs> but uh, you know, I like to leave people as much space as possible. If if you were in the if you come up across another angler that's in a hole that you thought you wanted to fish, um, it, that's not necessarily your right. I guess it is technically your right to be there. What if you're a guide though? Guides, what if you guide and that's the spot you've guided for the last four days? And yeah, guides. We hear stories like that, right? Where guides people clients uh, with clients the the civilian anglers let's call them come in and say uh i was fishing a run civilian <laughs> not, not royalty they were not just royalty they were just farm hands <laughs> oh, not farm hands this is in idaho oh jeez they no but seriously they uh we have customers that come in and complain about guides that say i'm fishing here because i have clients and that's not okay you you don't have a right to that run if somebody beat you there they have the right to fish it on that note i've had people walk right into the river in front of me and mm-hmm. when i say i'm sorry was i fishing your spot and they'll say that's a good one yeah i'd like to use that one i'm sorry i didn't know this was your spot was i supposed to move and they'll say well you don't own the river i always say you're right i do not own the river it's public but uh as just a common courtesy you usually don't fish the same run as somebody else yeah uh, if you want that run you can wait until the angler that's in there moves otherwise you know find somewhere else yeah. to fish um i, I That reminds me, there was a time I was fishing the lower Provo. Also, Colorado, guys, this applies to Deckers. Um, Or any other major tailwater. The analogy of uh, Colorado. But, (laughs) uh, you know, it gets a lot of angler hours, a lot of people that fish it, especially during prime times. But So I'm fishing a run, and uh, this guy comes up to me, uh, or behind me, so I'm kind of maybe a couple feet in the water is all, and he comes up right behind me, and without skipping a beat says hey i caught like 20 in here the other day i'm like okay that's cool you know thought he was making small talk he was just gonna watch for a sec um a couple other words of whatever small talk chit chat and uh ends up coming in about i mean it was less than a rod length it was probably six feet away i i guess he figured he uh he was my buddy by then and basically was telling me that was the only spot on the river that had fish or something. I don't know. Um, so it, it's tough because, you know, everybody's, you got to have that honey hole. I think you think, you think that's the spot, but uh, you got to be careful. You know, if I can cast into you and, uh, or at least poke you in the eye with my rod, that's a little too much. Too close. 
too close. You know, the, the thing about that as well is you might be walking down the river and you'll see two people fishing right next to each other, but chances are they're friends and they went to the river together. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's that's a time where it's acceptable to fish close as yeah. long as it's not Lance fishing close to you because of the smell. Well, and it'll you make know? you look bad. Yeah, well, because of the smell mostly. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's, that's the reason why you'll see people fishing fairly closely. Um, so I think that covers it with, uh, you know, a populated river. You know, you, you're going to be able, you're going to be fishing probably closer than you want to other human beings, especially if it's a weekend or a holiday. Well, let's talk about small streams or high you in as, you know, where the type of river where if you go and, uh, someone, you know, is fishing ahead of you it just kind of ruins the stream what's the strategy there so if you pull up to your parking spot and there's another car there or there's another two cars there how do you handle something like that um my opinion is you know if whoever got there first they get efficient you know and uh Maybe if you run into someone, you you ask them, okay, are you working upstream or downstream, and then go the other way. Yeah, you know, or you know, just be prepared to hike. But what are your thoughts, peeps? Yeah, I'm the same as you. I would say I would suggest finding another place, find another access point on the same river, or uh, if you're going to fish a high altitude lake, maybe fish the exact opposite side so you're not crowding them out. Uh, if you're willing to walk, which most people are not, then walk in. I, I think it's different too. I, I experience different etiquette normally uh, when I hike in somewhere than I do a roadside parking area, yeah. uh, riverside, I mean, parking area. So if you're in the back country, to me, you, I, I, you shouldn't see anybody else, I would say. You know, if, if you come across another angler, it's not okay to just leave them 30 yards and jump in ahead of them. You need to leave them a quarter mile half a mile at the very least so that they they certainly won't see you during the rest of the day and that they have enough water to fish for several hours and or at least fish water behind you that the fish have been rested long enough that they're not going to be still scared from when you waded through the same spot yeah yeah i mean you're if you're going to fish a spot that's likely to have someone else fishing it that's a sensitive water you either need to fish it during the week or get up really early in the morning and start at first daylight those are usually some good bets to get you know at least a few hours a piece yeah but you can't just go and just because you had a killer day last tuesday and you want to fish it this friday and saturday and camp there um you might run into visitors so just if you put that into your mind that you might run into to that it i think it i think reduces the chance of a confrontation this is too. a good opportunity also to talk about um you know using it as as a challenge so there's two things that come to mind when you if you go to a spot let's say this happens to me sometimes in the winter where i only have three or four hours that i really want to fish and i have in my head a place that i want to a particular type water type i want to go for a specific technique and if I get there and there's somebody there, well, yeah, sure, that bums you out a little bit, but there's two ways to look at it. One is you can fish behind the angler and take the challenge to, on a, on a river like the Provo here with lots of fish per mile, there are always fish that don't get caught and they're pretty, uh, they, they recover quite quickly, right? So you, one is a challenge, challenge yourself to, you know, t you know, just jump in 20 minutes below them and work at a steady pace upstream behind an angler and test your skills and try different techniques and different rigs to catch fish behind somebody. And then the other thing I think is just use that as an opportunity to fish new water. If uh, I know we find people think they have to fish the same run all the time. People come in the shop all the time and say, okay, I'm going to the Provo, where should I where's go? Where's the spot? Yeah, yeah where's, where's the, the spot? spot? Where should I go? And they're on all of our rivers, uh, almost everywhere in the world that I've experienced, you can go you know, as far up or as far down, as long as you're within, you know, temperature extremes, obviously if you're in a river that's hundreds of miles long, it may not have trout water down, way down, but most places in the West, you're going to have 5, 10, 15, 20 <coughs> miles plus of water and look at it as an opportunity to fish some new water. I think uh, a lot of us get so pigeonholed into just knowing one run on one river and we go there every time and you do yourself a favor by, uh, you know, expanding your boundaries a little, pushing your boundaries and learning something new. Yeah. So that's a good opportunity to do that. This is a good comment, I think, by Jim Williams here on YouTube. He says that, you know, uh, on busy rivers with more established etiquette, it's customary to ask. Yeah. So 
if you're friendly, you know, and you you say, "Hey, how's it going? Did you catch them all?" That's my, that's my, that's Cheech's, that's line. my line, right? The guys usually bust up laughing. Yeah, they're just like, "Oh my well, gosh, that is so funny." That big old fat-headed, <laughs> curly-haired son of a is pretty dang funny. No, but um, if you just open your mouth and be friendly about it, chances are, you know, they're gonna say, "Oh yeah, you know what? I'm done. Come fish right here," or yeah. they're gonna say, "I'm fishing up. I'm fishing down," yeah. or Usually on this river, we try to stay, you know, at least 100 yards apart or whatever. You or know, if, you, so. if you don't want to engage in a conversation, you could stand back and watch a lot of times and watch which direction they're covering. Are they covering up? It would take you about two minutes to see whether they're fishing up or fishing down. And you could also tell a lot by their casting. Are they fishing an indicator rig? Are they fishing streamers? Most people fishing dries, dry dropper, or... Uh, nymphing are going to fish upstream not always but most of the time and i would argue that most people fishing streamers are going to work downstream Again, right. not always but oftentimes so you could tell a lot by watching somebody's cast and just watching where they're headed to see which direction they're going here's one that i was thinking about that needs to be covered when we're when you're fishing a small water like that with a friend um how do you like to fish that? Because if you have the the one that's a mountain goat and just takes off up in front of you, and then when he sees you coming, I tails it out. And yeah, because we know we all know, we that, know guy. that guy. We know that guy, and that is about as frustrating as it gets. Because I think you know Curtis and I have fished with each other for twenty years, and it's usually you know we're taking turns. You know, he's catching a few, and it's not a formal thing, right? We're yeah, just, you just go. Hey, why don't you try that one, or why don't you try that, you know, fresh hole up there or whatever. And if you hit a power play? If, yeah. Oh, yeah. Discuss the power, power play. Power plays are real. If you get hooked, uh, if you get uh, snagged or otherwise Break incapacitated, off. it's the other guy's turn by default, and it's called a power play. And yeah. power plays don't count. Yeah, and that fish that you've been casting to for 15 minutes, yep. it is no longer your property. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's we call it baseball. The most of my angling friends we do in small streams we do three strikes. If you miss three fish or you hook and lose, you know, yeah, three fish, any combination of those, you're out. Or if you land a fish, you're out. And then it's fun to fish with that way because you kinda have the peanut gallery telling you, you know, Oh yeah, oh, that's you blew that strike cast. One. Oh, strike one, strike two. Oh, that's a, that's gonna do it. That's a beautiful cast. You know, you give compliments and you harass each other a little bit and it's really a, a fun way to fish and cover water without wondering whether you know the guy just high holds you that put his track shoes on and ran around the bend and <laughs> right oh yeah and that's the worst because a lot of times you know someone who's going to do that's less experienced fisherman they're going to flog the water with their saint croix trophy tamer wait no it's a fluger dang it i get those mixed up saint croix makes a good rod but they're gonna screw up a lot of water in front of you michael brown brings up a good point we had a lot of people watching who have not given us a thumbs up yet. <laughs> 113 cool. people watching and eight likes. He says he's ashamed <laughs> of 105 of you. <laughs> so, um, so that's you know, populated water versus small stream, and even on lakes. Like the the thing I think is funny on lakes is if you're out there fishing from shore. And, you know, it's a lake where other people can see what's going on and you start catching a bunch of fish and they start inching closer and closer and closer. <laughs> you know, chances are you need to work on your flies and your presentation as opposed to your location on the lake. Yeah. So um, keep that in mind. You know, there's sometimes it's you and it's not the spot. Right. I think everybody has a story where same someone came and crowded their hole and then you went to exactly where they were fishing and started catching fish again. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. That's how it goes. Um, um go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't. I was gonna say. Uh, oh, so I actually had one time where I was fishing. Uh, I, I think it was the Provo. I came down to the river and didn't see a guy who was down behind some bushes, and so I plopped out, like literally feet from him. So I just punched him in the face and moved on. <laughs> no. I just I said, hey, it. sorry, man. I didn't uh, see you there and, and got out of the way. Yeah, and people are going to make honest mistakes, so, right? People yeah, just... and I, I think that goes both ways. You know, give the person the benefit of the doubt. Um, maybe they didn't see you. Maybe they did, but uh, just communicate. And, and uh, like, it, it's funny because I also remember a time where I was uh, – <clears throat> 
it was on the Provo where for us it's one of the more crowded crowded rivers um, and it was literally wall-to-wall people and I kind of figured uh, I was gonna hike a, a lot that day and what I ended up doing was I ended up fishing water I normally wouldn't fish with a different technique like you were saying earlier and that day ended up being like insanely good because I just went out of the norm fished areas that I wouldn't fish fish techniques I wouldn't fish and had an awesome day I remember it till this day just because of that and you know why what makes those days so rememberable is it or it's it's not that you maybe caught more fish it's that you did it in a new spot with a different technique yeah those are always the days that stand out that oh you know I tried this thing that was new and and it was super cool as opposed to just going to doing the same thing over and over again mm-hmm. yep in my opinion anyway so always fun to mix it up yeah so let's switch gears to floating i think uh yeah floating would be a good one float yeah because we're going to talk about hot spotting in a little bit yeah and that's and where the preacher is going to come out gonna i get think some differences of opinion right but so there's there's floating etiquette um for both the waiting angler and the person rowing the boat and then boat versus boat Yep. So and still water and like still it. water. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I, when I think of that, I, I think of like the boat versus waiter um, argument or, or conflict there. And what happens is there are times on rivers where a boat can only go on certain portions of, of the river. For example, we float the Provo sometimes on a fly craft and it's a pretty small river. And there are times where I, you either have to choose one side of the river or another, or you have to go straight down the middle. And there might be an angler, and you might have to go right down their, their fishing their lane, spot. Yeah. And we try to avoid that as most we can. And you know, if an angler is fishing a spot, we try to go behind the angler. I always try to say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna go behind you so you can keep fishing your hole, mm-hmm. as opposed to just kind of sneak up on them and get snagged with a back cast." So that that's something that for people who don't row boats a lot they think well you're coming really really close to me but there might be only one spot on the river where a boat can go right so as a wading angler it's important that you understand that the boat has to go right there and number two as a as a boat uh operator to be able to control your boat well enough to get around that angler as best you can and also to communicate with them you know yes by yelling out Bear, oh. bear, bear, <laughs> bear, <laughs> no, and then they'll see sure. Cheech on the oars, and they run. It's a trained bear. <laughs> Check it out. Anyway, that's my thought on uh, um, the wading versus drifting. However, on a big piece of water, for example, let's say like the Green River or the South Fork, if the the really hot spot for say running a nymph rig is over there, but you have plenty of room to go pretty far out from from where someone has already established as a waiting angler the boat doesn't have a right to go fish that spot just because someone beat them to that hole or whatever or the the waiting angler likely has been there for a while so um there's no sense in as row as a rower to to go and row right through someone else's hole when you've got the whole river in front of you you know it, it makes no sense to me there my well, rant is similar over to like a still water with a boat and an angler who's tied to shore i mean we try to be we fish a lot of still waters uh, especially in the boat uh somebody on shore is fairly limited range so it doesn't make sense for us to post up on them within a hundred feet you know and, and fish the same area at least that they can reach um same with the boat i mean if we're able to move we'll move yeah in the boat uh we had a kid the other night it was a younger kid i don't think realized that we didn't have any other recourse coming down the river and he stood right in the middle of the run and so we anchored up for a bit just to see if he recognized that that was our only way to get through and it took a little bit but he eventually figured it out yeah moved on but um 
Anyway, yeah, the, so you just have to be respectful regardless of what you do. Whoa. Easy. I just hit, sorry, my bad. That was my bear claw of a hand that hit that. <laughs> Still water, I think, is less of an issue because it's usually a large yeah. body of water and there are lots of places to catch fish. But, oh, yeah. Uh, but it's also important to mention, I think, I've, I've certainly had people cut me off in still water several times. Uh, I had a guy this year that I was in my boat casting towards the bank. The bank is less than a, than a full fly cast from where I am. And a guy in a pontoon boat with a trolling motor came from all the way across the bay, mind you, like a mile away, trolling, 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 looking back several times. I saw him see us and cuts between me and the bank, which is where we'd been casting the entire time. And I kind of laughed and said, are you serious, buddy? Like that's, there's two miles of lake behind me and you had to go between <laughs> me and the bank. That's, you know, there's another time where it's just not okay. You, you have to realize if someone's in a boat, you, you have to obviously go around the boat, but there's a whole lake in, in this case, there was a whole lake behind us and only 80 or 90 feet in front of us. Uh, and we'd clearly been casting the same direction the entire time. So, you know, again, you got to look around and see. Now, on the flip side, if I'm motoring in my boat from one bay to another and I see a, a pontoon or a float tube or a canoe or whatever, yeah, I got to be courteous too and either lower my wake or stay as far away as possible, uh, see which direction they're casting, or if they're trolling stuff, try not to cross their, where their lines are. Yeah. Uh, but at, at the same time, I had a fellow at a, on a local lake this uh, I think it was this past fall, I guess. No, it wasn't. It was this spring. Uh, anyway, he he was trolling back and forth, kind of long lining monofilament right outside the entrance to the marina. So all the boats are going in and out, and he's yelling at boat after boat because they're crossing his line. I'm thinking, man, there's only there's like a 40 foot window where you can go into the the rock structure to get into the marina, and you're getting upset because people are crossing your lines. There's a whole lake to go fish. You got to use your brain sometimes, right? Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, anyway, you'd be surprised. Stillwater again. It's it, you can it, sound travels on stillwater. So if, if somebody's way catching a bunch of fish, think, yeah. you can talk to them from a long way. You don't have to get yeah. really right up next to them. You can talk to them from a long way off and not really disturb what they're doing. What are they using? I don't know. It, they said it was a bionic ant. They're I don't keep catching. It looks like they're getting doubled up again. <laughs> we heard that conversation i yelled at hey we have a bunch of flies we'll give you some oh no 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 we got something that will work <laughs> that was awesome oh uh-oh our stream just went video, video is, gone. is gone what in the can man? you still hear us via audio let us know video if you can gone. still hear us on audio video is gone i can see that can anybody tell us whether we still have audio who turned off the lights? The screen went off. Something just flickered, it's Curtis. The temperature was going up. There is a reason I have a backup. They can hear us, they say. Just can't see us. Okay. <laughs> I said Curtis got a new camera from Kmart. We're working <laughs> on resetting it. Okay, as long as you can hear us, Kurt or uh, hey, Lance and I will we'll talk. Oh, look. No, it'll go out again. I'm it'll sure. go out again. So the the video's back. We're still going to replace or put a di our other camera on. So anyway, still water. Some, still water. What were we talking about? Yeah, that's it. We covered most of it. Just be courteous. It's the same thing. Stay a long ways away from people. Uh, if you need to ask somebody a question, sound travels a long way. You can ask from quite a ways off. Uh, you know, it's, a, again, just treat others like you would want to be treated. If you have a question for somebody, ask. If, if you're, you know, rather than assume it's okay to do something, just ask. Uh, we launch boats a lot from shorelines, you know, pontoon boats, uh, drift boats, that kind of stuff. And sometimes from the time that we launch in the morning to the time that we come to take out, there are people right near where our trailer is. And I usually try and get close and say, sorry, uh, I got to get into my boat trailer. Where would you prefer that I go? You know, try and just be courteous. Most people was, are pretty good about it if you're courteous. I was uh, fishing a state north of here that's known for very slow, fast lane traffic. Yeah, driver, slowly. they also call duct tape Idaho chrome. Duct I mean, tape. wait, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's somewhere north of north. Utah. Yeah. 
no but anyway i was i was on a reservoir up there and i was ready to land the boat and there was like a whole family reunion playing on the boat dock and uh so i kind of drove by and said hey guys i need to land the boat here it's uh i need some room in case the wind blows me blah 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 and they kind of were like okay well and they were just kind of slow moving i'm like all right i'm coming in right now i hope my propeller doesn't chop any of your kids up (laughs) and everybody just scattered (laughs) you know just kind of joking around with them but anyway um don't play on the boat docks also with still waters if you're in a pontoon boat and you've got a trolling motor and you're doing the joel the jig troll you know and you're going backward and it's a very common way to fish around here um make sure you look back every once in a while because <laughs> yeah. you'll yeah. you'll joel yourself right into somebody i have been known to do that <clears throat> really, <clears throat> really loud just to get the uh, trolling tuber to turn around because they re- don't realize they're about to run into your boat what i've noticed is sometimes my cast can break the old sonic boom you know make a big whip across <laughs> lance and i had a guy joling into us on drifter and we coughed cast he saw us, I mean, he so, and he, he just kept coming. Um, but that was the only place in the lake that held fish, so well, you know how that works. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's switch over to hot spotting. Or do we have any? Yeah, other? let's let's talk about it. What else? Before our camera loses it. I think I think we covered the the whole uh, uh, etiquette. Yeah, part I mean, of there's it. there's obviously we could go on and on. Yeah, and on, you can talk for yeah. about it. Just but be nice. Be nice. Think yeah. of others. Everybody's trying to catch fish, fish and have a good day. Yeah, fish there's no spots. need to fight over uh, a fish. <laughs> I I want to read a text from Brigham. <laughs> Brigham and his friend we made fun of him yet. So Brigham and his friend went to an Argentine restaurant, and he texts me a picture of a morcilla. It's oh, like a black he sausage. Nice. He got it. Blood sausage. Yeah. <laughs> his comment is. Is it normal to eat? Is it a normal thing to eat a giant piece of Saint Bernard sh- in Argentina? <laughs> <laughs> and oh you said, si, my senor. gosh! That is a delicacy. Oh, oh, that sausage, poor Come on. Brigham. Brigham. Hey, you know what? The, the poor kid was raised on hot dogs and ketchup. So, <laughs> I mean, just tell him yes, Brig. All right, I'll text back. Yes, it is. All right, so let's talk about hot spotting. What is the definition of hot spotting? First of all. Should you do it or should you not? And also, let's talk about the social media aspect of hotspotting. Well, social media is the home of hotspotting. What is it? Yeah. What is hotspotting? So, yeah. Basically, hotspotting, and our definition would be um, kind of broadcasting in a uh, sometimes braggadocious way uh, where you're fishing. Um, and we kind of exclude water that everybody knows about. Like for us, we do. We're guilty of hot spotting because we yeah. hot spot the Provo. Like the Provo, people know that's where we are. Mm-hmm. We're not going to hide that, and and a million other people have access to the Provo. Um, we're not going to the Green River. Yeah, Green River. <coughs> you, you guys Reservoir. know when we'll fish that Strawberry Reservoir. The larger fisheries. Yeah, larger fisheries. Uh, however, and this is kind of where, you know, I'm sure people will. Uh, have differences of opinion that's where we've drawn the line we will not like you'll see a lot of our videos we don't mention where we are if you've been there and you know where it is kudos to you keep your yapper shut and (laughs) you're not no you know a hundred thousand people won't know about it Yeah. yeah we filmed at some really cool fisheries and then without fail we'll get the the guide who like takes people there <laughs> yeah, for a living and drives them to there who are from Utah. Yeah. And as long as they pay them to go there, then they're good. And then guess what? They're going to take their buddies there always all the time. But they're the ones coming like, you guys are going to ruin that fishery. It's like, well, the only people who know how good that is and know who have been there actually know what this is because we didn't name any names. Yeah. So, so anyway. the, the, with the concern being for people who may not know, <clears throat> the concern would be smaller, less pressured waters are not very conducive to hordes of people. Can't handle the pressure. And and so what you do, you run the risk. And I, I had this happen even before, you know, there was social media, but there was a, a place here in Utah that started to get a lot of uh, pressure uh, um, I saw, you know, as I fished it over time, I saw a lot more people fishing it. 
And <clears throat> it also kind of coincided at the same time with people who were talking about it on uh, discussion boards and uh, you'd start to see it come up in, in shop reports, fishing reports. Um, and what happened to the fishery, and I can't attribute everything to the higher number of people fishing it, but the quality of the fish went down. And this is a place that's not close anywhere. <clears throat> um, you know, and I could logically chalk that up to just bigger crowds. And mm -hmm. it, it, it was uh, really detrimental to the fishery. And some of these places are not meant to to have hordes of people. And, and, and the other challenge there is that they don't necessarily appreciate it as much as those that may have found out about it over time, Organically. Um, doing Just, research. Mm -hmm. I mean, we work in a fly shop, so we see, hear fishing reports a lot, but I mean, I spend a lot of time in my off season and collecting data and information about fisheries and, and mm -hmm. they change from year to year. So it kind of gets me too. And somebody walks in, Oh, that video up there, where is that? And yeah, we get asked that a lot. In we the shop. do. And we'll, we'll, uh, our thing as a shop is just, we're not going to, there's certain bodies of water, most that we're just not going to advertise and let yeah. people know. Um, wait alert our buddy trout howler. He just let everybody in on our secret. That trout howler. He's, oh, I won't give his real name away. He's he, a fishy freaking dude. He says, I'm sorry to let everyone know that you guys were fishing at Utah Trout Lake. Howler, you come with us on our next trip. It's yeah. A, it's an invite. All right. So anyway, yeah, we're fishing at Utah Lake. So if anytime Absolutely. you ask us, where were you catching those yeah. fish? Utah Lake. Uh, good old Jeff, Mr. Econ himself, Jeff Denning says, I think even without names, people can figure out where you are. How Jeff, do you feel about that? that... Is a good question. That's possible, well, Jeff, but usually that means they've already been there. Jeff, yeah. we know you're a you're a smart guy, and we know where you fish, Jeff. Right? No. <laughs> so here's the other thing: is if you have half a brain and you look at like the states, you know, each state has a you know, say the Utah DWR. You can look at some of the waters that they're managing for certain species of fish, and but you don't need someone to you know, hold your hand and say, oh yeah, yeah, it's fishing well. Like if you have good trout tactics and you know how to fish a river or a lake or whatever, you should be able to go to a place that's being managed for trout and catch them. Mm -hmm. So regardless of whether or not, you know, you're, you're being guided to it, you know, you, you should be able to go and do that just by doing some, some research yourself. Yeah. But, you know, unfortunately, Jeff, there are situations where, you know, we may not mention the place or you know show a ton of scenery well um, we've had a couple of videos but, yeah. that we have filmed that we shelved <clears throat> um mostly there goes the camera again you guys keep talking hmm, mine still shows it no well I camera's think, going out i think what curtis is saying is that well, and certainly we we've been people have accused us of this right we do we film on places where other people maybe wish that we wouldn't and uh, and we get that, but we also don't mention the spots. We uh, and we we've taken heat from other guides for sure. Uh, I can think of one place in particular that we've been, where another guide uh, commented to us saying, "You guys shouldn't be there."
So okay, audio should be back. Uh, Audio's back. Wow. Just a tremor. Earthquake. Oops, adjust her camera. Adjust the camera. This you shouldn't see. This is my water bottle, and we're out of Diet Mountain Dew, so I'm drinking it. Oh, okay. Where audio. were we? That, that folks, is why on. you have backup cameras. Yeah, backup <laughs> cameras. We got, got stacks Ooh, of cameras. Sounds good. So they said the last thing you heard was me telling about the guy that said we shouldn't be at a particular place, and then that set, that same guy ended up putting that place more than once on the interwebs. Yeah, and they that's didn't, actually again not, they didn't in their defense they didn't mention the spot either. Right, but I think to Jeff's point, you know, if you post it and people know, they know. I mean, I guess the big thing for us is one of them we decided not to post is a, a fishery that people probably know about, mm -hmm. but I think we'd be lighting a fire under a lot of anglers to to go fish it and we want to selfishly keep it a little less pressured for the time being um anyway but the bottom line is that, you know we do have a filter on our end where we're sensitive of spots uh we do know sometimes when people see in locations that you know one of their buddies knows where it is that maybe that clued in a couple people mm -hmm. I mean, again, we're not posting them to thousands and thousands of people no. as far as locations go. And for those that would get angry, because we've had a few customers that come in the store and say, I don't understand why you won't tell me where that is. And yeah. I haven't had anybody get really angry, but they, they are a little disappointed that we won't just volunteer a particular spot. And that we have to explain, look, our YouTube stuff gets millions of views. We're hitting millions of people. I mean, our <clears throat> Instagram's hitting 100 plus thousand people. If every place that we went, we said, hey, we went to such and you know Lake X Y Z, and we caught all these fish. Well, next week there'd be no reason to go there. So we've just cho we've chosen not to do that. What we are happy to do, which I think makes a bigger difference anyway, because we have a lot of great fisheries, is share how to catch fish, share yeah. techniques, share tips, share flies. We like to share. Uh, we don't like to necessarily hotspot the location. One thing that that you'll see with us is. Um, like we're we don't have the secret fly or the secret presentation. We right. we don't do that because it's. I think that uh, in the the fly game, there's no such thing as hot spotting. Right? It's yeah. It, you could have the best fly in the world if you don't have the presentation or technique. You're not gonna be able to catch fish with it. Um, but places are are a totally different thing. Um. I had another good thought. Let me think of that again. Mm. What else? Hot spotting. Talk. Let's talk about social media and fly fishing. Mm -hmm. Here's. I was actually talking to my wife about this. Most of the people that you see complaining about social media are using social media for the very vehicle <laughs> to 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 voice their complaints. That is true. And so, if you think about the positives of social media and the internet and all those different types of things and, and how it's taught people, you know, have, you know, brought them along in their, their fly fishing or fly tying versus the negatives. I think the positives far out, far outweigh the, the negatives. I mean, I've got some of my closest friends I've met through the internet, both of you guys, except for Lance. I think I met you at a, at fish tech. <laughs> Lame. Maybe who knows? <laughs> Curtis and I used to be on the old Utah on the fly board, but I mean, it's, it's very positive to, to, to meet other fishy people, uh, to learn stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, that was really super deep and that was eloquent. Deep. Write that down. Somebody. Well, here, that kinda, Brigham, write it down. <laughs> that brings up another point. Jeff, uh, mentions what's the right way to learn about a place. And what if you're just learning? And I mean, I think probably the biggest negative we get about people who don't like our anti hotspotting rules, like they want to know about the spots. I mm -hmm. get it. Yeah. They also would like to just walk in, have us give them the <clears> GPS <throat> coordinates a lot of times, like, here you go, and use right. this and this, and this is the spot. Um, the problem with that is it does, again, it kind of takes away the, I don't know, the earning it. You know, when I give my kids, uh, ten dollars versus making them earn ten dollars mm -hmm. so what is the correct way to earn or you know what's a way now i mean i am a big believer in the get a spot give a spot so i know you know we've got a circle of people that know that we know spots and they may know some other spots and i think when you get into that with somebody you're that's a good way to learn but you don't get to that point 
by just cruising in off the street or posting some, hey, where is that on Instagram? Mm -hmm. That that shouldn't happen, right? And nobody's really going to give up those spots. But um, And like, don't be mad when you don't get an yeah, answer. Yeah, I mean, it's just... It's like, oh, you're going to be like that? Then F you. You know, <laughs> I, I get that on uh, fly time with Uncle Cheech every once in a while. Yeah, and F then you they don't Frank. Know. Frank you. Frank you. Frank. And Dang then they don't Frank. know that I, my that I'm Cheech from Uncle Cheech, and I have to tell them I'm going to tell Uncle Cheech that they're being mean. By the way, if you're not on fly tying with Uncle Cheech on Facebook, yeah, you need to get on there. So get on there, share your flies. Good banter. You can share your blurred out photos. I think, I think one of the things I would say to Jeff there is that uh, the right way to learn it is, in my opinion, is to get out a map. And I can tell you from my my own experience. I'm just old enough that I learned most of our fisheries before the internet existed. Delorme. <laughs> Delorme is right. <laughs> Got out the map. Delorme, I don't know how you say it either. Mm -hmm. But I had a fishing friend or two that we would just look at the map and find a little yeah. blue line and uh, sometimes an intermittent blue line and have two or three of them in mind for a day. And if the, the first one you tried was great fishing, then the other two were next up on the adventure list. Yeah. And I've fished a lot of the small streams in the state by just finding them on a good old map and trying mm -hmm. them out. Uh, nowadays, you can probably find them on the map and then find a little bit of information on them by doing some research. Yeah. And research, I think, is the right way. And, and like you alluded to earlier, by looking at the Division of Wildlife, um, to looking at uh, fishing reports from fly shops, from fishing reports from websites, looking at uh, stocking reports, there's all kinds of information to help you figure out places to go fishing. And half of the fun to me, it's more rewarding to learn about a place that way and go try it out and and not know that it's already has giant fish or not know that it has nothing but tiny fish, but they eat dry flies like crazy. Or, yeah. But just going and experiencing it and having the adventure, That's I think that's the right way to learn it. But if, if you do somehow come upon an awesome spot to fish, don't don't feel guilty or don't fish it. You know, go, go fish by all means, yeah. but uh, just know that if you tell people about it, especially on social media, um, you're you going to have visitors. The chances next time are you, you will there. not be alone the next time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, that's kind of <clears> long <throat> and short of it. Um, one thing that I do and just, I mean, I spend, like I said, a fair bit of time in down season or in the winter because I get cabin fever. But looking at stocking reports. Um, Creating nerd sheet. I, mean, I have, sheets. yeah, I have a gigantic spreadsheet with stocking information for the last 10 years in Utah for mm -hmm. every body of water. Um, so I can, you know, if I fish somewhere, and I'll take notes on things, but if I fish somewhere five years ago and it was good and the stocking reports since then have been good, uh, then, you know, I'll go give it a try. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you know, we fished a, enough to know where certain spots are so if we see one i can kind of make a mental note oh yeah that looks like it fished good last year mm -hmm. or maybe this year early it didn't have a winter kill i mean there's a lot of things that you can do to kind of figure out uh places and sure if your buddy's gonna share a spot with you that's that's and you sometimes part of the thing. you just gotta go yeah. we uh i went with brigham and another friend yeah. what two weeks ago to a new lake that none of Nobody us had ever, ever fished. fished yeah uh we in a fair bit of research over a few days we could find i could find one person that i talked to that knew of another person that fished it but that was it that was yeah. all the information i could get on it and we went and we caught fish like crazy they were tiger trout they were not big. Oh, I know where it was. Oh, he knows where it is. Yep. Tiger trout is a hi hybrid he, between a brook trout and a, and a, a brook trout. A, rain, a, rain a brook trout and a brown trout. And Here they're only in four streams in Utah. Oh, okay. Yes. So he, he still doesn't, he doesn't know where I went. That's the funny thing. I was thinking about that. There are times where I know you just hit an awesome spot. I don't ask you where you fished. Yeah, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't, yeah, right? But I, I know that there are times where I'm not going to blow you up and say, hey, what, what part of the lake did you catch that massive laker? But we went we went to this lake. We caught a lot of fish. We learned what it has in it. Brigham went one time since. He had a great time. I haven't gone since. The fish in there were very user-friendly. We caught a lot of them. Yeah. They were... Uh, they were not very big, and so to me, I kind of for me, I crossed that one off the list for this year. Maybe next year, if they have a chance to grow a little bit, or two years from now, if it keeps water in it, it could be really good. But we just went and explored it. That's that's the right way, I think, to do it. Rather than have you don't have to have everybody hand, 
you know, spoon feed you everything. It's, yeah. it's uh, half the fun is the adventure. And sometimes you go to a place like that and you strike out. And sometimes you go to a place like that and it's awesome. Yep. You know, I, I think part of the thing um, about, you know, looking at the internet and figuring out spots, it's from pictures, from landscapes or whatever. And so, you know, there, there are a few options. If you want to take a picture of a fish that you caught somewhere, A, take a picture of it close to the water without your mug in it. You know, don't do a hero Being shot. Gasp, I can't have my face in every fi- picture of a fish? Now, well, on the other side of that, I do like hero shots. Every I, once in a while, I don't while like gotta... the people that don't that say you can't have any hero shots. That's No, I, no, agree. I, I agree. And, and I'm not that. saying that, Lance. I know you're not, because you do. <laughs> I've seen you do plenty of hero shots. Yeah, But there exactly. are those that say hero shots should be banned. Well, and in I think that's taken certain states in the eastern part of the country, if you drop a fish from six inches above the water, it dies, it dies. immediately. <laughs> but no, I, and so that's the thing is if, if you're worried about the landscape, then find a more creative way to take a picture of the fish, A, or you could use a, a blurred out photo, which <laughs> I mean, I think that takes away from the, the whole photo, but I've done just, some of that. Just know, oh yeah, I think we all have before. I have a blog post about the Green Ninja. You <laughs> should look it up. Funny. But you know, it, it's it's just part of fishing. You know, yeah. you're just wanting to share that you were super stoked to catch this awesome fish. Yeah, nothing wrong. With and that. it's it's not that I hate you and I don't want you to fish there, but I kind of do. You know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, hot spotting. So we're, you know, we would ask <clears throat> as you would ask us. If you're online, if you're on Facebook, you're on Instagram, you're on wherever, whatever social media platform you're using, just be smart about it. Don't, uh, you're not, you're, you're not going to help a fishery by telling thousands of people where it is. Uh, encourage people to do a little research, encourage people to have a little adventure and learn about it and go and try different places. And, and keep posting awesome pictures of fish. We don't want that to stop. Uh, I think it's really fun to see my social media feeds are mostly just anglers. So I just see fish after fish after yeah. fish, and I really like it. It's a fun way to, uh, rather than uh, the other things that are going on in the world right now, it's a good diversion. <laughs> yeah, it's a good getaway. I think part of the, the thing is like, if you post a picture of an awesome fish, is to practice what you're gonna say to people. Where'd you catch that? Utah. <laughs> Well, what part? Um, yeah. And most of the time I've heard Lance, what's your response? Where did you catch that great big fish that you were? I usually say to? west of the Mississippi or I say uh, on the South Fork of the Green River. South Fork. <laughs> so there's there's a good old-fashioned joke um, in Utah where we, tri- we tricked some people in, into going <laughs> to an imaginary river called the West Fork of the All Red. So if we ever tell you that we caught a fish on the West Fork of the All Red, um, you might actually get somewhat far on Google trying to find where that is, but it's it's a made-up place. That's just our nice way of saying I'm not going to tell you that because the place can't handle any more pressure. No, we don't need to tell everybody where we go, that's for sure. Someone says, exaggerating the size of your fish. I've only met one person I could constantly trust. Well. I didn't know we'd met, JD. (laughs) You know, exaggerating size of fish. It's like, you know, if you post a picture of a 16-incher and call it a 20, which happens a lot. An awful lot. It's, I mean, people can see through that. Why would you do that? Anyway. But it is fun to catch big fish and share them, you know. Yeah. A lot of our friends and acquaintances through the shop, uh, we see some awesome fish. People have some really cool adventures. Um, And yeah, I mean, if we feel comfortable with somebody, like if we're asking somebody about a location maybe, um, we're usually doing it quid pro quo. So if we're asking about a location, it's usually because it's in Argentina. (laughs) (laughs) That too. We'll hotspot the heck out of that. In (laughs) fact, we were... uh, in the in the shop, we usually have videos behind the register. Someone looks up, and it it was a one of our floats in Argentina. So they're like, "Where is that?" I'm like, "Oh, somewhere south of here." He's like, "Oh, uh, New Mexico." They uh, <laughs> started naming all these places. The I'm toilets like, flush in the other direction down there. I'm buddy. like, 
no dude that's argentina and uh but he kept asking a bunch of questions it was great fun anyway just because someone tells you doesn't tell you exactly where they're fishing doesn't mean that they hate yeah. your guts on the flip side i've had several people ask where we're fishing on the video screen downstairs when we're floating the Provo and there are people that like, I just got done ringing them up for flies on the Provo. Yeah, like, and to me, I'm, they're like, where is that? Can you tell me where that is? And I'll be like, uh, that one I can. Yeah. That's the lower Provo. And they'll look at you like, no, what? it's not. And I'm nope. like, you should go try more fishing more than one hole. I think is probably, <laughs> oh, yeah. we're back to the, uh, cover some new water. Look I do declare challenge. that on the lower Provo, <laughs> if you're not looking at a tennis ball size balloon <laughs> on your indicator rod, you are not fishing. There you go. There's the preacher. Okay. That's all I have <laughs> to add. Thank goodness we got that over. Yeah. Lance hates that, but he's I don't hate that. Boring. I just like that it's over with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's so many comments. I could go from there, but I I won't. <laughs> Softballs. <laughs> Softballs. All right. What, what else, else do we have in here? Um, any other questions about this um, fairly com- controversial topic? I know there are some people that just think that you know you should never post about locations or pictures of fish or any of that kind of stuff and usually those people are pretty angry all the time anyway very easily offended but for for most of the people that i've seen that have very very strong opinions opinions about it it only takes about five minutes of looking on their social media feeds (laughs) to to see that they're totally hypocritical thing yeah so, yeah, if you have a strong comment about it one way or the other, make sure you go through your social media feeds and make sure that you're 100% in the clear and then comment <laughs> away. And then we'll tell you, yes, we were wrong. We're there the bad go. guy. But kind of just, uh, I think, maybe to wrap up, what have you, almost at, almost at an hour. Um, like we said earlier, we may try, we'll fish a lot of different places, but uh, one thing to take away from what we do is more of the techniques and the approach not so much the location because you know even lakes with uh let's say big brook trout uh there are not a ton of those around but every state has some lakes with good brook trout i'd say most um the techniques that we use where we are are going to be fairly universal i mean uh we had a video lance and i filmed and uh he went Fly to a fishing dry, for noobs. dry oh. dropper. And, uh, you know, you could do that same technique in similar water anywhere. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's a good takeaway from that. So uh, we're not going to give you directions to the spot we fished. Well, that's a that's a great technique, a different way to approach it than you may have thought, rather than joling with the woolly burger. You know, the, the other funny thing that I was thinking is there's a spot that we fish that we've talked to people who have who had been there before us they saw our video and then they went back up but they still got their butts kicked because you know they're they're fishing it all wrong you know yeah so just because you're you have access to the location doesn't mean you're going to go up there and crush it. and i'm not saying that we're awesome fishermen at all the technique not. though is that's but the key that's yeah. that's what we're happy to share you know if that's if, if we have one takeaway one thing to leave you with you today it's that Our YouTube channel is not going to shut down. We're still going to have YouTube videos. We're going to share techniques. We're going to share rigs. We're going to share lines and flies and all that kinds of stuff. Yep. Uh, But it's, you can take, just as Curtis was saying, you can take good technique and use it anywhere on planet Earth for trout. And the more experience you get and the more, you know, different places uh, with various techniques you have, the easier it's going to be for you to adapt to every new situation you encounter. So, Look at our channel maybe less as a uh, a hot spotting place because we're not we're not likely to give you a whole bunch of great places to fish, but more of a way to learn uh, a little bit more about fishing. We're all learning it as we go, and we're trying to share what we're learning with you. Well said, well said, well said, well, Lance. Good job, buddy. Good job, buddy. <laughs> well, <laughs> there you go, a podcast. And just so you know, um, in case you haven't uh, seen it yet. We have a store, a shop in Orem, Utah. Of all places. we always There are several people like, I followed you online. I live two miles from here. I didn't know you guys had a shop. Yeah. 
It's like, okay, cool. We have people that drive down from Montana just to see the shop. No. <laughs> anyway, so um, we, we have a store here in Orem, Utah. We have a website, store.flyfishfood.com, that has 16,000 items that will help you catch more fish. 22. 22,000? Did I you just run it? it today. Holy crap. Yeah. I need to update that little oh, tidbit know. of my memory. So lots and lots of stuff to help you catch more fish and tie better flies. Um, follow us on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you ring the bell so that you can be notified when we drop these hot fire Big videos. Time. You know, this is also a good time to let people know that you've probably noticed that our fly tying videos, we haven't been updating those as much. And so maybe we should have started with this in the podcast, <laughs> but um, it's a supply chain thing more than anything. And, uh, you know, if we can't have a ton and ton, ton of hooks, beads and materials to release a video, it's better for us just to wait until we until have it. But I do declare. We'll get I thought there. we were over this. We weren't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that we have a bunch more fly tying videos in the hopper. We and do. We're going to be dropping some hot fire, right? That's right. Hot fire. I think I have some in there anyway. Ooh, yeah. Lance yeah. is in there Burn. on the hook for a few. Yeah, that's that's actually the, the medium salsa. <laughs> <laughs> not the that's picante. That's the mild jalapeno, jalapeno not, not salsa. Not the hot fire. Anyway, so we appreciate your support. Uh, follow us and comment and participate in our social media ventures. And sometimes you'll even be able to see the Squatch Dog if you come in to the shop. Maybe we'll so. probably get you back in two weeks. Oh, yeah, two weeks. Every two weeks we're going to try to do a podcast. So so yeah. if you disagree with some of our sentiments on hotspotting and etiquette, then please send an email to nunyabusiness at flyfishfood.com. <laughs> Nunya business. <laughs> oh, freak. That's uh, spelled L-A-N-C-E. No, that is spelled... She <laughs> yeah, that's that's my joke. Whenever we have a a newer customer in the shop that's buying flies, and we have a bunch of other people who know who we are, I say <laughs> these flies are guaranteed to catch fish on your first cast. If you don't like it, and if they don't, you can come back and complain. My name is Lance Egan. <laughs> You've yes. heard it before, once or twice right. per hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a great joke. Oh. It's joke. great. It's it. It, it gets a laugh every time. <laughs> All right. Somebody wants an application. He's tied every phone uh, on YouTube. I think he was talking about the f fly fish food team. We're always taking applications. Just send yep. them to C H double -E, e C H at yeah. flyfishfood.com. Yeah, seriously, just send it to Cheech at flyfishfood.com. We are looking for a filming editing slash social media expert. expert. And we're yeah. always taking good applications. So if you are the type of person that can take harassment and oh, yeah, uh, that's a pre <laughs> yeah, and loves to bad. fish, you might fit in. But we're already full of people that are five, six, and under. So. <laughs> you just had to get Briggs jab in. <laughs> Boom. Poor Briggs. All right. All right. We're out. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks for Adios. listening. Adios.